Well, it is time to build a roll cage. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. As you can tell, we are continuing on with the JK Ultra 4 build. And like I just mentioned, it is time to build out and start building our roll cage. Now, unfortunately, I can only work one handed. Luckily, the shoulder surgery went well. It's been about a week since and I'm up here able to start working around in the shop just a little bit slower. This isn't going to be a step by step tutorial because every roll cage is different. Every design is different and it really depends on how you want to build it. Now I know the first thing people are going to ask is why didn't you go with this roll cage, this brand roll cage, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of options out there, but to cut that really short, none of the roll cages that you can buy online and have delivered to your house are going to meet ultra four spec. And we're going to talk all about the specifications in the video, the rules, regulations, what you need to build it to and kind of what we're looking out for in regards to safety because in the end it doesn't matter how cool we build this thing if it's not going to keep us alive in the event of a rollover it's useless we have a lot to do in this video let's get started now i have about six main goals that i want to accomplish when we're building this roll cage and the first one is quite obvious i want it to be as strong and safe as possible that kind of goes without saying if we're building a roll cage i want it to be able to handle some pretty heavy hits and to protect us in case of a rollover. The second one is to be able to build the roll cage to be removable until the final assembly. And that's gonna help us make sure we can get in and weld the backside of the tubes, full penetration, really good welds, and then we'll be able to paint it at the end because nobody wants a rusty roll cage. Now it is a little difficult planning out a removable cage that in the end is going to be fully welded. And we'll talk about the plan for that once we get started here. The third one is going to be obviously meet Ultra 4 tech specs. I don't wanna get out there and find out that we missed a rule and we're not able to race without completely redesigning our roll cage. We're gonna go over all the specs and what is required out of a roll cage to race an Ultra 4 or King of the Hammers. Now the fourth one is a pretty big one and it is often overlooked or kind of realized at the last minute after the roll cage is built. We have to have three inches of head clearance between the roll cage and the driver and co-driver with a helmet on. So it's important to make sure we sit the seats, position those so we have at least three inches of head clearance and of course, make sure we have enough room in here to sit comfortably without laying up against a piece of DOM tubing. Fifth one, I want this to have good style. Now, function is more important than style in my opinion. However, I don't want this to look like some wild home-built roll cage. I'd like it to resemble a nice clean Jeep roll cage while still offering a ton of protection. So it can be a little bit difficult getting that good style while still retaining the strength, but it's not that hard to do. And the sixth point is having a six point roll cage. It kind of tied into each other right there. So Ultra 4 Rules says we have to have a six point roll cage tied into the frame. Now you can run a body mounted roll cage, not the kind that you could buy from, you know, a Jeep modification roll cage dealer. It has to actually tie into the body in a certain amount of spots, has to run sandwich plates of dissimilar size, but typically running straight down to the frame as your termination spots, it's gonna be the strongest and best way to build an off-road roll cage. So we do have, I've already talked about in a few videos, kind of the plan for the terminal ends on the cage. Using leaf spring outriggers, couple tabs right there and we're running a solid bushing setup that's going to allow us to remove this cage until final assembly and we can weld it in and box it in and then in the event that we ever need to remove the roll cage for repairs body swaps really any of that all we have to do is cut those bushing legs off pull the bolt out grind the top off and then our cage is now removable but it still meets ultra for tech and i'll talk about that and show you guys how we plan on doing that here in a minute now a few days ago mike and i were up here and as you can tell we actually have the first part of our roll cage done this is our dash hoop i didn't record it because i wanted to make sure first off that me and mike were going to be able to do this with me having a hurt shoulder we've been covering almost every single part of this build and recovering after surgery, I honestly wasn't in the mood to talk. I wanted to see what kind of work we'd be able to put out with me having a shoulder down. And luckily it turned out pretty good. We're gonna check this here in a minute, throw it in the Jeep and get started with this roll cage build.
time to kind of loop you guys into what's going on with our dash hoop, the first piece of the puzzle. So we're gonna start off down here at the frame. I mentioned in a ton of other videos how we were terminating onto the frame, and that's just the Barnes four-wheel drive leaf spring outriggers onto the frame, which brings it out and gives us a super solid base to mount our roll cage to. So we have our solid bushings inside the tubing there, and we have our tabs kicked off. Now the end goal is to weld this plate on. Once we're all done with the cage, that's gonna box this in. We're gonna weld on top. We're gonna weld the tab to the outside of the tubing. So at that point, the it's not removable. You could pull the bolt out and the cage isn't going anywhere. The bolt setup is just so we can move this in and out freely and pretty much weld it and build the cage outside of the Jeep. So as you can tell, we have our little A-pillar post for the dash hoop coming up. We coped those, put our dash bar across, put some TMR end caps on there, and we tied this into the A-pillar of the body. So the reasoning behind this is to structurally bring the body and roll cage together. I like this a lot because if we take a huge side impact against a rock, Typically what will happen is your body will continue to cave in until it reaches the tubing right here, which in our case would be quite a bit. Since we're structurally tying this in, if we take a hit right here, the body's not gonna deform as much and really move around until it hits the, the, the cage. So this setup was pretty easy to make, I'd say. Not easy, but compared to the rest of the roll cage, this is one of the easier steps. So our next step is how we're gonna tie in our main dash hoop which goes up along the windshield frame and down. Since we couldn't bring the dash hoop all the way out, which is what typically is done, we're making stanchions or little standoffs for that that are gonna tie into our dash hoop frame, this post, as well as our A-pillar mount. So this is gonna tie right here. We're gonna have, actually I'm gonna need Mike to uh, kind of mock all this up and I'll hop on the Jeep. So we're gonna mock that up. One thing while he's getting that ready, I want to show you guys a real helpful tip. I shared this on Instagram, but if you're dealing with brackets that are covered in mill scale, all you got to do is dip it in some vinegar, leave it there for a few days, and the mill scale just practically wipes off. So instead of grinding down all the mill scale, get some vinegar, soak it in a bucket, and you'll be good to go. So here is how we're going to bring all these together. We're going to cope and weld into the dash hoop bar, our lower bar, as well as that A-frame post. So the PVC is just something we can use for mock-up to make sure everything's good. And then on the bottom, we're gonna box it all the way in with some gussets. Structurally, I think this is probably one of the best ways we can go. And earlier, did a ton of modifications up here on the windshield frame. Actually, not the windshield frame. We folded the windshield frame down and made notches on the, uh, what would you call this? That is the top of the cow. Yeah, oh, perfect. Top of the cow did a bunch of cutouts to fit the pipes. Here is where our windshield V is going to be. So we're gonna go up, go to the center there. So all of that's prepped. The windshield, in the end, we're not gonna be running the frame, but it's nice to be able to build the cage around the frame. So after the race, if we wanna throw the windshield frame back on, we can still do that without having to change up the roll cage. So build it around the windshield frame. I do wanna mention, all of the welds here so far have been TIG welded. So one thing we really need to look out for with MIG welding, especially on tubing like this, you can get a lot of distortion and next thing you know, stuff doesn't fit where it is. So the other day, once we tack welded this up, ran it over to Mike's house and his buddy TIG welded up, did a fantastic job. TIG welding is going to be a little bit stronger. It prevents a lot more of the warping from happening. And with my current state, I've tried laying down some welds, and if I'm not perfectly flat with one hand, it's, it's just not working. I didn't realize how much I use my left hand for stabilization when welding, but TIG welding it, it's gonna give us a stronger output. Unfortunately, I will not be able to say I welded the entire cage, but I have no problem with that. So I'm still welded in house, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it, we, didn't, we didn't pay a shop to do it. Now, while we're here, there is one thing to mention any point where there could be a single weld fracture. So let's use this for example. According to Ultra 4 rules, we have to have a gusset here. So we can use a few different ways to gusset this. We can use a three by three gusset. We can use a saddle gusset, and I'll throw a picture of it right now. It's just kind of a molded and shaped gusset. Or we could use a tube and have copes on both sides to gusset this. Like that. 
and uh, we actually do have a three by three gusset over here. Uh, Barnes four wheel drive, three by three gusset. There is a thickness spec, but usually three sixteenths or quarter inch is more than enough. Yep, so every single intersection like that is going to have a gusset just to make sure if one of the welds do break, still structurally sound. So that's a lot of talking. Let's put the camera down and get these tacked in. Our stanchion post plate is all boxed in on both sides and we are good to move on with our main dash hoop and that's the project for today. But before we dive into that, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the tools that we need to build a roll cage yourself. Of course, there's, you know, you need, you need space to do it and you need a lot of equipment in order to even think about building a roll cage. So the first one is going to be a nice chop saw. This is the Evolution chop saw. We got the stand for it. Cuts through metal like a breeze. You can throw a miter on it to get your angled cuts. Second up, naturally, is a tube bender, which is kind of self-explanatory. If we're gonna put any bins in a roll cage, you need a tube bender. Now, there's a few different types of tube benders. You can do the manual one where you ratchet it. You can go air over hydraulic. There's electric over hydraulic. There's a lot of different types. Just depends on how much you wanna spend. Now, one thing to think about is your tubing dies. Sometimes when you buy a tube bender, you do get to choose one or two dies with it. These are pretty expensive. The die sets for your different diameter pipe or tubing is usually around four or 500 bucks. So that's something to think about. In our case, we're gonna be building with two inch DOM with sections of one and three quarters. So we have both sets of dies there. Now, another thing to mention while we're talking about tube benders and die setups is the roll cage specs. So if your vehicle, according to Ultra 4, is gonna be over 4,400 pounds, you gotta step up to two inch DOM with 120 wall thickness. If you're under 4,400 pounds, you can go with one and three quarter, 120 wall thickness. Since we don't know the exact weight, we're going with two inch DOM, it's gonna be safer. And most likely, once all said and done, this is going to be right around 4,400 pounds, maybe a hair over. So continuing on, we do need a welder, Miller, Lincoln, doesn't really matter. I know there's a lot of different personal preferences with that, but you do need a welder. Also a tube notcher that we're gonna be able to notch with angles and of course, hole saws. And does help out to have a deep cut saw. You can get these from TMR Customs. What will happen is if you're doing a cut at an angle, you have to cut the pipe. That way this goes all the way through and we'll show you that in a little bit. So a few hole saws for that. And over here on the bench are a few helpful items to have. Not exactly necessary, but these things make it a lot easier when you're building a roll gauge. First one is gonna be a digital angle finger. That way you can mock up and figure out what angles you wanna do your bends at. Second, another option for finding angles is a cage gauge. This is pretty neat. You put PVC pipe in there and it's actually set up for the correct radius of the bend. So depending on your tube bender and the pipe and dies that you're using, this radius of the bend is either gonna be larger or smaller. So this mocks it up perfectly. We can figure out what angle we wanna put our bend at and make the bend in the bender. Up here we have a flange wizard. This is extremely helpful to mark the tubing especially once you start getting into those compound bends, if we need to bend down this way and have it go in, it's super easy to lose track of which way your bends are going. And next thing you know, when you're throwing it in the bender, everything's not lining back up to zero. This helps you set that zero and dial in the angles. Once again, we're gonna show you all of this later. And lastly is a little, uh, I really don't know what these are called, but it helps you find angles and notches. And this is from, I think, Centurial Inc and it has the ability to throw a little laser light in there so you can mock up directions and see with a laser pointer where we're going. So that is a basic rundown on some of the stuff that I would recommend having before building a roll cage. Let's get started. Everybody welcome Gary to the channel. He decided to swing by and lend two helping hands. So we are about to start our first bend on the roll cage. So we need to figure out our distance from the pad up to the beginning of the bend here. Also, we found this angle right at 27 degrees. So we're gonna cut that at 27 degrees, measure up to our first bend. And we made a test bend over there behind Gary, 90 degrees and 
So we made a test bend and put a dimple one inch evenly all the way across here. That way we can measure from the beginning of our bend, see how long the radius is, as well as kind of get an idea of where we need to put it in the tube bender before it starts and completes the bend. So first step, cut this pipe. So we've thrown our first bend in there, set it at 60 degrees, and as you can tell, we got the pipe overhanging. Definitely need plenty of room. And all we're doing now is just trying to figure out, really at this point, it's just styling, trying to figure out the next bend on how it's gonna come down and at what angle we wanna set the fastback at. So this is 35 degrees. We messed around with 45 and 40. Wasn't a fan of 45. This 35 isn't looking too bad, so. It would be right there. The B pillar would actually come up right before the bend. And then down here, we'd have to kick it down straight. Let's see. Yeah, just kind of like that. I'm sold. I think that's it. 35 degree bend. Throw the line at the beginning of that. It's time to do our final bend where it terminates on the rear of the cage. So this is going to be a compound bend. So every bend that we've done so far, the 60 and the 35 have been on the same plane. But this last bend, we actually need to have it come down, bend and go in towards the frame. So all we have to do is rotate our pipe down 10 degrees to get a compound bend consisting of 60 degree down and 10 degrees out. So it's a little tricky trying to visualize everything and figuring out which way it's going to bend. But once you see it, it's, it's fairly simple. If we look at it from this angle, if that was down and this was straight, it would be the same thing as our roll cage coming out and flaring this way. So we're going to lower our stand here until we meet 10 degrees. And then at that point, set up our bender in the exact same way. Throw 60 degrees in it. We should be good to go. Before we start forgetting where we did all the bins and everything, we're gonna go ahead and start on the passenger side and make an exact duplicate of this one, just on the opposite side. The only thing that's gonna be different is that 10 degree offset. We're gonna kick out the opposite way, so inward. So you can visually see it now, you know, 60 degree bend, 35 degree bend, 60. We actually bumped this up to 68 degrees with the 10 degree kickoff. And with it flat on the ground, you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm happy with this. A lot of work for one, but while it's all fresh in the head, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So to make it easy, we scribed where we put our bins in the bender. Now every bender is gonna be different, but find a spot where you can mark on the bender where you know if you line it up with here, in our case, it's three, three inches, three and seven eighths inches to the beginning of the bin. So on each one of these, all we have to do is measure from the end of this up to here, put that in the bender. The next one's gonna be in the same spot. Same with this guy right here, three and seven eighths away from our first start of the bend and back here. So we should just be able to replicate this exact same thing. So when you're bending tube, you need to account for spring back. You gotta go a little past your bend, and then when you let off, you'll actually see it springs back right where you want it. So of course, you gotta find out where your spring back is, not only for the type of material, but also 
your bender set up. Well, unfortunately, it looks like our day might have come to an end. Hydraulic ram blew out the seal, and luckily, the side shop junkyard outside is coming in handy. So this, there was something wrong with this one. I think it might have been the, uh, the air unit. I think the ram itself is actually fine. So we're gonna disassemble that, see if we can't swap the seal. So we're gonna swap parts over and hopefully be back in business here shortly. So this morning we started fitting up and getting our main roll cage hoop installed. Got Dustin over here, put in some great work, working on these notches, getting everything really nice and tight. And we're tack welded in, TIG welded. So we're moving on to the second piece over on the passenger side. You're good, just go for it, I'll talk through you. And uh, this is looking really good. Super happy with how it's turning out, but we're trying to get as much done as we can. It's Sunday, so trying to knock out this work. At this point, all we're doing is coping, notching, test fitting, making sure everything's level, making sure everything's square. Since we're not running the windshield, none of that really matters. The big thing we're looking for is making sure the top of the cage is level with the tub and looking at it on the backside, making sure it's not tilted, making sure it's level straight up and down. We're gonna do the exact same thing over with this one. So he's working his magic. And at this point, cut, test fit, cut until it's perfect, making sure we don't go over too much and have to rebend this entire part. I just did their extension. So we've got both main hoops done. And at this point, all we're doing is working on our front windshield spreader, which goes across here. So we have it notched. We're gonna tack weld that in and then hopefully be able to pull the cage out to make the rest of these welds behind here. That's still a little bit hot. And then kind of make sure that the cage is removable at this point. So everything's looking good. I'm happy with it, man. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little bit useless right now. <laughs> Because that sometimes they jam up and you gotta... Oh, I see. Yeah. 
I want to give a humongous shout out to Mike and Dustin for putting in a ton of work yesterday. I just sat around and did whatever I could, but honestly, those were the guys putting in all the work. This cage is looking phenomenal. Beautiful welds by Dustin. Mike put in a ton of work helping out, doing all the notching and whatnot. I am super stoked at how far we've gotten with this. So my main goal was getting this main framework for the cage done. That way we can start figuring out where we're gonna put our B-pillar, all of our diagonal bracing, the windshield V, and we have a lot of work ahead of us, but that is going to have to be in a second video because this one's already quite long. So moving forward, the next video is when we'll hopefully kind of dive in a little more on the technical side about notching tube, bending tube. This one, we kind of sped through it just because I'm on a time crunch. I'm actually heading down to Texas to do some Coast Guard Reserve work in two days. So we are gonna step back for a minute before everybody heads out of here and I want to announce a gift card giveaway winner. So a few videos back I mentioned that we did have a gift card giveaway coming up and to be entered all you had to do was have a comment on any of the race jeep build videos and the winner all i did was export all the comments and randomly selected a winner stormborn jku you won a 100 dollars gift card to hq off-road once again i also want to give a big shout out to hq off-road for offering these gift cards and we do have quite a few more coming up throughout the build video so if you do want to be entered all you got to do is head down to the comments and leave a comment you're automatically entered hq off-road has all kinds of jeep accessories jeep parts they're actually the ones I got our PSC big bore steering box from. So if you're looking for some upgrades for your Jeep, head over to hqoffroad.com. Give them a call. They have great pricing and super friendly guys to work with. Man, every time I look at this cage, I am happy with it. But moving forward, you'll see why we're doing things the way we are. And it's kind of hard to explain until we continue on working on it and can physically show you what the plan is for this Jeep. But this video is long enough. Thanks for watching guys. Like always, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next week with another video.